Hey everybody, my name is John McLaughlin and I am a family therapist with Harmony Family Center. Today I wanted to read you a book called Seeds and Trees written by Brandon Walden. So let's get started. In the land of the king lived a special young prince who loved climbing his trees and playing with friends. He lived in a castle overlooking the sea he played in a field with his two kinds of trees. He carried a satchel slung low on his waist to contain all the seeds he might want to exchange. Each seed was a word that someone had spoken. Each seed was collected, a trinket, a token. It didn't quite matter from where it had come. A stranger, a friend, a whisper made up. He rose every morning to water the seeds from each of the words he'd already received. When someone spoke nicely, not anything mean, they'd hand him a seed whose essence was green. But sometimes the seeds would come bringing pain, seeds of dark color whose trees produced shame. Several dark seeds grew quickly, then withered. Others remained to grow slowly, unhindered. At the end of each day, he'd admire the seeds and go plant the new ones and play in his trees. The trunks and the branches of dark trees were laden with thistle and thorns causing him pain as he scaled them. Climbing these trunks and these branches was tricky. Each part of the tree that he grasped was quite prickly. Each time the prince climbed, he was bruised and was slit, yet trees are for climbing, so through the pain he persists. But each time he climbed, his trees clothed in green, he felt safe and healed as those trees weren't mean. His green trees were strong and they welcomed his touch. Their branches grew fruit he could eat or could clutch. He could sit at the base or climb to the peak. He could rest in the branches or play hide and seek. As years passed, he noticed his green trees were weakening. The trunks at the base of the trees needed strengthening. The soil had hardened as life was escaping. Their canopy covered as his dark trees had shaded them. He would plant his green seeds and dark seeds beside. Then they'd war with each other and try to survive. His green trees were strongest with plenty of light, but his dark trees grew stronger in the darkness of night. They shared the same water and sunlight to grow, but the dark trees were hiding the fruit that would show. The green trees caused life and peace to grow near, but the dark trees killed soil and grew trees clothed in fear. The field the prince planted had started to show trees of two kinds and the fruit that had grown. The fruit fell like seeds to the soil below, seeds to be gathered or given to sow. The young prince grew strong and became a young man. He continued to plant the seeds handed to him. He invited some friends to come play in his trees, but some liked to play in his trees from dark seeds. He had one special friend who always spoke true, words filled with candor as good friends will do. She never spoke harshly and never spoke lies. She always spoke lovingly with gentle replies. She always gave green seeds and never took back. She never ran out. There was never a lack. Her satchel was filled to the brim, overflowing with green seeds, not dark seeds, all for the sowing. She watched the prince plant and water his grove. She watched and she waited until asked to go. One day the prince said, hey friend, come along. She humbly agreed and began singing a song. To the grove, to the grove, we will look down below at the roots in the soil and the trees that have grown. We will care for your green trees and even plant more seeds, but your dark trees will fall as new life is sown. As he walked in his field with his friend by his side, the young prince took note as his trees came alive. Green trees were swaying to the sound of the tune, but the dark trees stood stiff, clenched their fists, and seemed rude. After years of planting and watering seeds, they'd grown into tall and powerful trees. 
The prince reminisced as he entered the grove. He thought back to each tree and the seed that was sown. He admired the beauty the green seeds created, but noticed at the roots the life had departed. His friend came prepared and brought tools along. The prince hadn't noticed, but his friend was quite strong. The tools that she carried were weathered and humble, a pickaxe, a saw, an old rusty shovel. The friend asked the prince to pick out a tree, one causing pain that he'd rather not see. The prince pointed up to one skinny dark mass. His friend said, watch this, then she took out her axe. With one mighty swing, the tree fell to the ground. Then his friend dug her shovel deep, deeply down. The root had to die and be plucked from the dirt. Then a green seed was planted and covered with earth. The prince exclaimed, can you cut down more trees? His friend said, yes, I have plenty of seeds. Some of the dark roots had tunneled so deep that it took them a while to dig underneath. Dark roots seemed to wrap around the green everywhere. So the friend showed the prince how to tend with great care. Her tools came in handy, the axe, saw, and shovel, and others the friend had brought to the struggle. Then came the day when his forest was green. Not a tr dark tree was spotted, not any were mean. The friend then surprised the prince with some gifts, new tools for his daily watering shifts. She instructed the prince not to plant the dark seeds, but to go to the cliff and cast them out at sea. The prince nurtured the green seeds, and those were all saved. But the dark seeds were tossed off the cliff to the waves. Then he traveled to new fields abounding with trees, making sure that he packed his satchel with seeds. To the grove, to the grove, we will look down below, at the roots in the soil and the trees that have grown. We will care for the green trees and even plant more seeds but the dark trees will fall as new life is sown.